and you'll have a chance to see uh, uh, some uh, uh, demonstration models of the, the Land Art Generator Initiative over at the conference site at the Four Seasons Hotel tomorrow. Our final speaker for the evening is Sadhu Johnson, who's Deputy City Manager of Vancouver. Sadhu helps to oversee the development and implementation of Vancouver's Green City Action Plan, which builds off Vancouver's successes in building a green city. He's also the co-author of the Guide to Greening Cities and is the founder and co-chair of the Urban Sustainability Directors Network a network of over 120 municipal staff focused on greeting their cities. Saturday will tell you what he's been up to recently. Saturday. So after all of these amazing talks, imagine Vancouver as a 100% renewable energy city. What an incredible vision for our community. Well, our city council has actually given us that directive. They've told us to be a 100% renewable energy city, and we know we need to do it before 2050. That's 35 years to transform this entire city. Luckily, we're building off a solid track record. 6% decrease in greenhouse gas emissions since 1990, with a 30% increase in our population, and over 20% increase in our jobs. Vancouver's demonstrating that cities can actually do this. We can deliver. We can make change. We can develop a plan. We had our first carbon plan over 20 years ago, and we've implemented it. Now we have 98% last year greenhouse gas-free electricity. But still, in our community, with the lowest greenhouse gas emissions per capita in, in North America for any city, we're still only 31% renewable. Think of how far we still have to go, folks. It's kind of daunting, actually. You look at this beautiful city. It's so amazing compared to just all the places in the world. You think about the boats, the greenhouse gas emissions, the, the trucks, the trains, the heating of the houses. It's just, it's like, wow. How are we going to actually create this transformation in that period of time? So we're charged at this point with developing that plan, figuring out how do you actually do it in a city. Well, we have a few ideas because we've been doing it for a while. And they're kind of basic in many ways. Build your community so people can walk places. It's not that hard. People are healthier. They can walk around their neighborhoods, connect with each other. This infrastructure is cheaper to maintain. People like it, actually, when you give them the chance to do it. Add bike infrastructure. Take away a car lane. Take away space that's not being used for something else and add infrastructure. We added this, and we had a 400% increase in the morning bike commute on this route. People respond to it, all different ages. People want to get out of their cars. You need to give them a chance. You need to make it convenient. You need to make it fun. Well, we need public transit. We have a transit referendum going on right now. It's not looking really good, which is kind of depressing for the conversation we're having tonight, because we all need to step up to do this. But we need to electrify that public transportation system, like the SkyTrain here, which runs off of that renewable electricity that I was talking about. So we need to transition our mobility and make uh, public transit really accessible for folks. And some people are going to drive. We talked about that today. It's fun. You can plug in at home. So we need that infrastructure across the city for trucks, for buses for the private car, for companies. So we do need EVs. We need to build out that infrastructure. We need to figure out who's going to own it and operate it. We need to make it easy and convenient. We need to mandate it in our building codes. Speaking of building codes, we need to go far beyond where we're at now. We have the greenest building code in North America, but still, when you're building in Europe, you're 30, 40, 50, 60% lower energy consumption than we are. This is a passive house, almost 80% energy reduction. So we need to build that into our codes. We need performance-based codes that really talk about renewable energy, including the addition of solar. We've changed our building codes. You have to be solar ready. And we need systems in neighborhoods that those solar installations can connect into. As we've already talked about, solar's really improving. We need to get it on our buildings, and we need to connect those buildings to each other through district energy systems. We built the first one in North America that takes sewage you flush your, you, you, run, you run your dishwasher, hot water goes down the sewer. We can take that out, sequester it, heat an entire neighborhood. If you live in that neighborhood, your, your greenhouse gas emissions are 70% lower because you're using the renewable energy from the waste heat. We can do this. We can now mandate new developments to it. So there's a lot that we've already got, but there's a lot that's coming. There's new technologies. We've talked about it already. We haven't figured this one out yet. We're going we're gonna to figure out how to do it, but we do know that there are new technologies coming that are going to change the approaches that we take in the next 35 years. We don't know everything that's going to happen. And we know that change is not linear. This is me. <laughs> I, was, I was about 35 years ago. I grew up in India, running around on the streets of India. I never expected that I would do this. We don't know where we're going. 
35 years seems so far away, but it's actually just, just a few years behind us. I was running around, never expected to be in a suit, trying to change the world in the way that I am. We don't know the changes we're going to see, but we do know one thing. It's not linear. So folks that hear our vision about being 100% at renewable energy city, they think, well, that's impossible. How could you ever do that? But look at the type of changes we're already talking about. And it's not linear. The cell phone example is just a great example. The cost of solar going down so dramatically, we never would have expected that, that would happen. The cost of energy storage is going down so dramatically. We've, we talked about that already tonight as well. So we can't even begin to imagine 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. But what we do know is that it's not going to happen if we don't develop a plan and begin implementing it now. Look at Dubai. That was the 1980s, folks. It was a dirt road. Look at it now. Look at the change that happened in building that city in such a short period of time. We underestimate what we can do in 10, 20, or 30 years, and we always overestimate what we can do in one, which is quite stressful. <laughs> but here in Vancouver, here in Vancouver, we've seen similar changes. This community is, is being transformed before our very eyes. And what's so amazing about this vision to be a 100% renewable energy community is that it gives us a roadmap, a path for how we're going to grow. Dubai built these islands. I, it's crazy to me that they did it. But the fact that they were able to do that, build these islands, build this place, it's a clear message that we can do this. Our cities can do this. And we're not alone doing it. As you heard, I, I work with Urban Sustainability Directors Network. The last two days, we've had 17 of the world leading cities from Yokohama to Copenhagen here mapping out our path together for how we're going to achieve these goals. Because we can't do it alone, but we can do it. And the only way we're going to do it is by planting the seeds now for the future that we want. And I'll tell you this, it's not going to be easy. We've heard amazing stories tonight. But just changing that one bike lane, you'd think that the world was coming to an end for those folks. <laughs> It was a major election issue. These changes are not easy. We know we have the path forward. We know we have the technologies to do it. But we, all of us, we're all going to need to work really closely together because residents, citizens, businesses, they're afraid of change in many ways. And we all need to work together to implement the kind of change that we want to have. Thank you very much.